Hey folks, thanks for being here. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I am Dr. Joe Esposito, and I'm going to do a show for 65% of you. <laughs> Isn't that an odd topic? Wait, wait, wait to start the show. I want to talk about crazy things that can cause you to gain weight. That's 65% of the population. Now, full disclosure, I used to be very heavy when I was young. Um, I have stretch marks on my chest, back of my legs, so I get this whole food thing. Now, that was a long time ago. About 30 years ago, our food supply changed dramatically. We went to things like uh, farm, farm-raised farm animals, uh, not farm-raised, uh, factory-raised animals, contained animal feeding uh, operations, I think they're called, CAFOs. Contain, uh, and what they do is instead of having animals wa- wander out in the field, they put them in pens. Many times pigs give birth. They can't even lay down. They can't turn around. Uh, they, they stand in their own squalor and, and waste many times. And that becomes a big issue because the animals are so stressed out. If an animal's out in the field and it's eating grass, again, I don't eat animal products. I haven't had animal products in over 30 years. But if an animal's out in the field and it's it's less stressed, you're not eating all that cortisol and the adrenal hormones that are released from an animal like you that's under stress. And those toxic chemicals are bad. And if they're raised in a factory— Many times there's steroids, chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, herbicides, tranquilizer, genetically modified foods that's involved as well. So it used to be you can kind of gauge how fat you'd be or how skinny you'd be based on your calories. We can't do that as much anymore because there are so many more things than just excessive calories that we have to worry about. It's a lot more than just hot wings and sitting around. It's it's it's. Poor food choices, of course, have something to do with it. Too much sugar, too much sweeteners, lack of exercises. But a landmark study, this is neat, published at the Journal of, the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine, found that the obesity epidemic paralleled the increase in industrial chemicals in our environment. Now, this is a couple of years ago the study was done. New researchers are finding that exposure to certain common what's called endocrine-disrupting chemicals and other food ingredients, not just lifestyle choices, could be programming us for weight gain, diabetes, and a bunch of other health problems. You have to acknowledge the fact that obesity is not just about willpower, and it's not all your fault because of what you're eating. It can be anything. I had a a young lady come in the other day as a patient, probably her mid-30s, and she had two kids, and we were talking about her diet. Because every patient that comes in our offices, I do nutritional evaluation with them if they want me to. And it's all included in the treatment plan if you become a patient. And we do a nutritional evaluation, and we're talking about things. And that day, I had three different patients, not just hers, but three other patients come in. And we started talking about things that aren't food-related that can be affecting your child's health. One lady had breast cancer, so it was her health. And I talked about endocrine-disrupting chemicals like air fresheners. It was around the holidays, so I talked about... Uh, pine tree smells and cinnamon sticks and all these n- not real ones, artificial smells. And I, the carpet cleaners, air fresheners. And I talked about how that could be affecting children's hormones. And one of her children had a severe learning disorder. And we talked a little bit and she started crying. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, I never knew this. I just bought, it's sitting in the car right now, these air fresheners that you plug in the wall to freshen the house. Because she had a couple of kids, and it stunk. You know, kids stink. And she said, I never knew this. I've been hurting my children all these years. And I said, no. You weren't doing it on purpose. Well, you were hurting them, but you weren't doing it on purpose. And she said, how come, the question I always get, how come nobody ever told me this sooner? Or the spinoff on that one, why haven't I done anything sooner? And I said, you didn't know. But the good news is you know now. And so it's not just about that. And another lady came in, um, and she had breast cancer. It got, went away. It came back again. It was getting worse. And she stunk to high heaven with perfume. I do not like perfume. I'll tell you that right now. So if you come into my office, please, I'm begging you, don't wear perfumes, colognes, any of that. And I said, listen, I, I know you like your perfume. And I was like, going to say, obviously, you like your perfume. You smell like a, well, a perfume store. How about that? And I said, you really need to stop wearing that. But why? I love my perfume. And I explain why. And she got all teary-eyed. And she goes, how come my, my cancer doctors never told me this? I don't know that. I'm, I, I'm sure you have some of the best cancer doctors in the world. And I support what they're doing because I support all health so- forms of health care. 
I can't solve all the problems. I work very closely with doctors of all different professions, and I refer to them, and they refer to me. And so she said, I would never knew that about perfumes. And then we went to air, air fresheners and car cleaners. In fact, a buddy of mine picked me up the other night for dinner, and I got in his car. He goes, you smell grapes? And I said, yeah, a little bit. Why? He goes, I got my car cleaned today, and I told him no air fresheners, no carpet cleaners. He goes, but I bet you the rags that they use probably had the chemicals on it as he was wiping down his car. So these chemicals can cause abnormal cell growth. They act like estrogen, and estrogen can cause abnormal cell growth. And what do we call abnormal cell growth? Say it with me. Cancer. Yeah, there you go. So this study from the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine talks about several things that can be making you gain weight aside from food. And the first one was really interesting to me. Animal studies suggest that exposure to certain substances during fetal development or early in life can disrupt the normal development of an organism's hormone system, promoting the development of fat cells and hampering the body's ability to send and receive signals that allow it to operate in good health. So what your mother was exposed to can determine how you lay down fat. Ladies, gentlemen, if you're of childbearing years and you're bearing child's children, childs, you need to be careful. Because what you're exposing yourself to can be affecting your child's health. This sets the stage for metabolic diseases like diabetes as well as a lifetime of health problems. A recent environmental health perspective study found that suspected obesogens, isn't that great? We got a new word now, obesogens, meaning a chemical that can lead to obesity, in the bodies of many pregnant women who can pass them along to their developing, uh, can pass them along to their developing fetuses. It appears that exposure to certain chemicals during critical windows of fetal and early development could permanently program a person for obesity or diabetes, which may not show up for decades down the line. So we're talking about different modes of actions. Chemicals could be interacting with the brain, the pancreas, the liver, the fat cells themselves. The end result is obesity. So 30 years ago, back in the old days when I was young, 30 years ago, we didn't have not only the food supply being so altered, we didn't have all the air fresheners and the carpet cleaners and the new car smells. All of those toxic chemicals, perfumes, hairsprays, scented shampoos. I remember scented shampoo, though. My sister used to use one that smelled like strawberries. But we have so many more toxic chemicals than we had 30 years ago, and we're eating out more, we're eating processed food more, and we're getting less exercise, and, and, and. So it's not a thing, it's the life that we're leading now. And if your goal is to get well and stay well, you need to make some changes. And you need to make them today. Not tomorrow, not after your birthday, not after spring break, summer break, fall break, Christmas, New Year's, holidays, whatever, flag day. Do it now. Why not? I've been in practice over 32 years. I don't know how many patients I've seen. I'm guessing tens of thousands. And it's so rewarding when patients actually, well, most patients do, when they listen to the advice I give them. And I always tell them this. Let's assume I'm wrong. So what? I was wrong. But if I'm right, which I am, I want you to do this for the rest of your life. And this is what happens. Most people do it. Some people don't. And they'll do it, and they'll be amazed, blown away at the results. And then they'll go on a cruise or they'll go on vacation or it's Tommy's birthday or their sister's going out for margaritas on Tuesday and they'll blow it out like the old days. And then they'll feel awful. And then they'll come to me and I've had him already say, if, if you're Catholic, you'll get this joke. You know, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. That's how you start confession as a Catholic. And I said, speak to me, my son. What have you done? Have you sinned? Yes, I have, Dr. Joe. <laughs> and they go on and confess their sins to me. And we joke about it. And they say the same thing every time you were right. You were so right. I thought I could handle a couple of margaritas. I thought I could handle a double beef cheese hamburgers. I thought I, no, you can't. And the thing is that right now, chances are you're so sick, you don't even realize how sick you are. I had a friend of mine that did a hair analysis on her. We do that in our office. We can actually analyze your hair and determine what sort of mineral deficiencies you have. And so she wanted a hair analysis. She was starting to turn a little gray. I did a hair analysis, and I recommended certain supplements for her, and I didn't speak to her for a while. And then I saw her. She goes, you know, I took those supplements you gave me, and I just put them aside, never took them. She goes, I started taking them a couple weeks ago. She goes, 
oh my God, my digestive system is better. I'm going to the bathroom better. I'm losing weight. I feel great. My energy level's high. She goes, I didn't realize, and she's very healthy. She works out. She's a vegetarian. I didn't realize how sick I was until I got better. What a profound statement. And she said, thank you, Joey, because she calls me Joey. She said, thank you, Joey, because it really helped my life. So it really does work. We can do hair analysis. We can do allergy testing in our offices. We can do blood analysis. We, we have you prick your finger. We can do a blood sample. We can send it out for analysis for food allergies. And every patient that comes in my office, at least I look at what they're eating, and I'll ma- make some dietary recommendations and usually some supplement recommendations. The one supplement I always recommend is Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source because those are two powders, and they actually help you control your appetite. And the reason is that when you're hungry, you're not hungry for food. You're hungry for nutrition. And if you have trouble with ravenous appetite, raise your hands if you do. Go ahead, everybody. Now raise your hands if you're lying. That you do have it, you didn't want to admit it. Okay. We got to front load the body on nutrition. We got to get as much nutrition as I can into you in the proper amounts as quickly as possible. So Super Green is an essential source. Man, that stuff is awesome. I have it sit right in front of me right here in the studio right now. I take it at least once a day. It's great for kids. I have people coming all the time. Well, Dr. Joe, my child is, once they're on solid foods, you know, what can I do to get my kids good nutrition? Because if you ever go to the store and you know how to read labels and go, go to my archive radio shows, I've done shows on how to read labels. And it's on my website and it's all free, drjoesposito.com. And they read the label and they say, but Dr. Joe, this has acylfame K in it. This has artificial sweetener, aspartame, sucralose. This has chemicals in it, additives, dyes. Chemical dyes that have been shown to enhance ADD and ADHD. What should I do? I say, take, take the essential source. The essential source is a little more palatable. The super greens is good, but for kids, you know, sometimes kids are fussy. I say, take the super greens, take about a half a scoop or a scoop of super greens, some coconut milk and a half a frozen banana. Whip it up in a food processor, give it to them as a smoothie. Or if you make it thick enough, you can call it ice cream. And just get them used to that flavor. Then add a little bit of the super greens each day until they get used to that too. And now you're giving your kid 10 servings of raw fruits and vegetables, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, complete multivitamin, uh, wheatgrass, barleygrass, and alfalfa gra- grass to alkalize the system, dults for iodine for their, every cell in your body needs iodine to help their thyroid grow. And guess what? Same thing for you. And when people start doing it, they're amazed. I had a guy come in the other day. He was, he was laughing. He says, Doc, he says, I, I mixed up my super greens. I made it in a smoothie. Super greens an essential source. I left it on the table. My dogs ate it. They couldn't stop eating it. They loved it. He says, so I started giving it to them instead of one that they bought. You know, there's one that advertises that is an animal supplement with enzymes in it. He says, yours is about half the price. They like it. They wouldn't eat the other one. And they're getting way better results. So it's even good for animals. We think. I assume it's good for animals. I'm not an animal. I don't know. So that, that, that's something you might want to consider is getting the super greens, the essential source. And if you want to help curb your appetite, I take the super greens, an essential source with about a tablespoon of coconut oil, extra virgin organic coconut oil. And boy, I tell you what, you eat that, you're full. I don't really need to eat anything for several hours after that. It's really kind of cool. So we're talking today about things that can make you gain weight aside from just food. And many times it could be what your parents were exposed to. Studies have found increased rate of diabetes among farmers and pesticide appliers, applicators, people that apply pesticides. But it appears that even low doses that the general public encounters can mess with your hormones. There's banned chemicals like DDT but they're still in the food chain. And they're linked to things like obesity along with organophosphate pesticides. These pesticides are designed to interfere with the hormones, uh, the hormone processes in insects for the insects to reproduce. So when you use a pesticide, it either kills it, kills the bug, or it affects them so they can't reproduce. And then it wipes out the species that way, or the, the, the group anyway, not the whole species. And... Guess what? When you're eating these hormone-disrupting chemicals that are affecting bugs, they're also affecting you. And there's low dose, and a lot of times it's common ones that you'd use around the house. It's a, a carb- uh, carbamate pesticide, and those are the things you might spray around your house. So be really careful what you spray around your house. The best thing is clean your house really well, and you can use some natural pesticides if you need to. Um, If you have to spray them, I'd rather you spray the pesticides outside the house, not inside the house. With me on that? So why am I so concerned about these obesogens and these chemicals that affect your hormones? 
I'm a chiropractor. I'm board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, uh, pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, retired dietitian, award-winning author, nationally syndicated radio show host. And I've been in practice over 32 years. And so my job when a patient comes in my office is I want to get their nervous system working the best we can. And if you're putting these outside chemicals into your body, you can be A, gaining weight, and fat produces estrogen. Estrogen can alter your hormones, which now affects your nervous system. So being overweight isn't just, hey, I've got this belly roll. It's the fact you're altering your hormones because the estrogen is being produced by the fat cells. And so we need to do something about that. And as a chiropractor, I want to get you well. I want to get your nervous system working, your digestive system working, and good nutrition. So, folks, if you have a healthcare problem and you'd like to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. I'd love to have you make an appointment to come see us. The website to make an appointment, drjoesposito.com, or you can just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. We'll set you up a time to come in. We'll check your nervous system. We'll check your digestive system. And then we'll determine if you're a candidate for our treatment. And if you are, I'll say, hey, good news, you're a candidate. If not, I'll tell you that too. But if you're serious about wanting to get well, I want you to make an appointment. Go to my website and do it right away. Or you can call us if you want to as well. But the website is there 24 hours a day. And we accept most major medical insurances, car accidents, sports injuries, workers' comp. The car, if you're ever in a car and a car was damaged, ever, your spine was damaged. And you need to get it put back in place and fixed. So you can do the appointment online or call us, drjoesposito.com. We'd love to have you come see us. Marietta, Stockbridge, and in Duluth. If you want to order Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Essential Source, you can get them on the website as well, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. And I tell people, listen, try it for a month. Get a month's supply. See how you do. Now, what usually happens is this. Patients get them. They start taking them. And they start feeling a little better, a little better, a little better. And then they may stop taking them for whatever reason. Maybe their supply ran out. They didn't order in time. You can put it on automatic reorder too, by the way, which is the way I recommend it. And they'll say, Doc, I didn't realize how bad I was until I was so good. And I, I, I've had people threaten me jokingly, don't ever stop making Super Greens an essential source. I said, I don't plan on stopping it. I mean, I got to make it for myself as well. Stuff is great. So you can get them on the website too, drjoesposito.com. You can get Dr. Joe's cold and flu tonic if you have a cold, immune booster to keep your immune system strong through the winter. Uh, we have Dr. Joe's intestinal cleanser to get the bowels moving. If your bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, yes, a day, you should be taking intestinal cleanser as well to get the bowels moving until it gets normalized again. So we're talking about, back to our topic, um, things that can make you gain weight aside from food. And the pesticides not only can cause you to gain weight, but they can mess with your hormones and be really serious, uh, lead to real serious health issues. So what do we do? Well, I want you to eat fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Best thing to do, eat organic. Researchers have found it takes about five days of eating organic for your body to really start to cleanse most of those toxins out of your system. So you can cleanse them out, but you keep putting them back in. When you start eating more organic, it flushes it out, which is really cool. If obesity link isn't compelling enough to go organic, pesticides are also linked to certain cancers, ADD, ADHD, autism, Parkinson's, and a bunch of other health issues. So you might want to consider getting your house cleaned up. And if you have bugs in your house, go online and look up natural ways to get rid of bugs. And there's a gazillion ways to do it. Some work, some don't. I'm going to be honest with you. But try to clean it up. And if you have to use pesticides, try not to just spray them randomly. I had an ant invasion in my house not long ago, and I just couldn't beat it. I don't know where they were coming from, but, man, it was just like waves and waves of ants. So I got a toxic chemical pesticide. And they said, just spray it along your baseboards. Well, what I did is I put the pesticide on a piece of cardboard and I put a drop of honey in the middle of it. Well, guess what? The ants walked across the pesticides, took the honey, brought the pesticides back to their house, whatever they live in. Hive. Hive? Ants are in a hive? Anyway, within 24 hours, all of them were gone. I don't like killing them, but I don't want them in my house either, messing up with my house. So if you have to do it, just be careful on how you do it. Bisphenol A, you probably heard me talk about that one. I love that word, bisphenol A. Studies have found, uh, find that BPA has the ability to accelerate fat cell differentiation, disrupt pancreatic functioning, and cause insulin resistance, leading to obesity problems. Now, so many people have pancreas problems. In fact, yesterday, a gal I know called me up, and uh, she said a friend of mine's mother 
or, or somebody she works with, whoever it was, was just diagnosed with pancreatitis and perhaps pancreatic cancer. And she says, the game's over for that, right? And I said, well, I've had several patients over the years with pancreatic cancer. Some made it, some didn't. The success rate is not as predictable as it is with, let's say, chiropractic care and pain or working on a, a acid reflux and pulling the stomach away from the diaphragm. We have pretty predictable results with that. But I said, you got to take the stress off the pancreas. You have to start eating more raw foods. You have to stay away from all pesticides, all canned foods. Because where do you get BPA from? About 80% of the BPA that's exposed, that you get in your body is from eating canned foods. When you open up a can of food, the lining of most cans today, and that's going to change, by the way, because crazy people like me are out there talking about it, are, they're using a chemical called bisphenol A or BPA. And we used to make baby pacifiers out of this stuff and sippy cups, and you'd make plastic baby bottles that you could microwave, and we were dumping this hormone-disrupting chemical into the babies. Now, that was probably 10, 15 years ago. Well, you see a lot of changes in the past 10 or 15 years, haven't you? Health of children, ADD, ADHD, autism. Is there a link? I can't prove it, but I can speculate that there is. And so what happens is the exposure uh, to the BPA affects the neurological development and the sexual reproductive development, including male infertility in humans. So not just in kids, but in adults. So if you're going to eat something out of a can, here's my suggestions. Rinse it off thoroughly. Like if I use canned chickpeas, for example, I always buy organic. And a lot of companies don't use BPA anymore, which is good. Uh, I think, uh, was it Aldi? I think I saw a couple of products at Aldi. If that's a grocery store near you, uh, they don't use it anymore. Some of the organic companies aren't using it anymore. So they're pulling away from it because people like me have been reporting on it. So the BPA, really bad, and we're finding it can affect men and women sexually as adults and can increase your risk of cancers and, and uh, reproductive problems for children as well if you can try to have children. So scientists don't know the number one exposure to BPA because it's produced in such high volume, it's everywhere. So canned foods is probably the biggest one you're going to get. Until more data is collected about BPA in our bodies, a prudent step is to minimize things like canned foods or rinse the food once it comes out. Another thing is cash register receipts. Cash register receipts can have BPA in them. Now, some companies don't have it, but you, you, most cash register receipts are going to have that in there. So if you don't need a receipt, don't take it. Tell the cashiers you don't want the receipt if you're going to have something you don't really need to document. Try to choose food that's fresh, frozen, or sold in glass jars over canned because most metals contain the BPA. And now some companies, and they got a little sneaky, but they got busted on it. Hopefully it's not being done anymore, and I don't know if it is or not. They said no BPA, but they were using something B called BPS. BPS is similar to BPA, but it's not BPA, so we can say it's not BPA. So you want to really try to avoid that. Now, those hermetically sealed packages, like milk can come in sometimes, you know, the ones that are shelf-stable. Years ago, when I was like 10 years old, I think I was, I went to Germany with my grandparents. And they had that there, these, these hermetically sealed, you know, shelf-stable milks and stuff like that. And we didn't catch on for until years later here in the States. They don't contain BPA. So you can get tomatoes and things like that in those containers, and that might be a, a better, not might be, it would be a better choice. So this can actually cause you to gain weight. So you're trying to lose weight, you're eating canned foods, the bisphenol A can be disrupting your hormones. And that's a no good. Because as a chiropractor, I want your nervous system working and the hormones affect your nervous system. And I can give you the best adjustment in the world. And my team of doctors, I love my doctors. They're all great. They work on me. And they can give me the best adjustment in the world. But if I'm not taking care of the chemical aspects of my health, I'm not going to get all the benefits that I want. I'll get benefits, but not all of it. So, folks, if you have a health care problem, you'd like to come see us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. We're number one Dr. Joe in the world. You can make an appointment online or call us. We accept most major medical insurances, car accidents, sports injuries, workers' comp. We want to be your doctors. Give us the opportunity to prove to you that if you get your nervous system working, your digestive system working, and good nutrition, chances are you're going to be a lot happier than you are right now. So if you want to make an appointment, you can do that online. If you want to order Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, those are online as well. Uh, I think you should because that's at the minimum amount of nutrients that you should be getting. You can get those online. You can get my books, Eating Right for the Health of It, and Prescription for Extreme Health. Those are available there as well. Uh, we have hundreds of hours of archive radio shows free. 
Uh, I want you to go to uh, YouTube and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can watch lots of videos as well. And that's no charge, too. Folks, got to go to a break. Do me a favor. Don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, thanks for sticking around. I am Dr. Joe Esposito. If you're just joining us, welcome. Glad you could be here. Uh, we're talking today about things that can get, make you gain weight that aren't food. And one of the things you have to know about, because this is something we all use every single day, are personal care products. There's chemicals called phthalates, and they're hormone-disrupting chemicals. They're tied to obesity, and they are ubiquitous, which means what? They're everywhere. And they're in personal care products. I guarantee if I went into your house right now, I'm going to find them in there. 2010 study published in Environmental Health Perspectives found that children with higher phthalate levels in their bodies experienced stunted growth. So we're looking at tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of these chemicals getting into your body, having a major effect on how you do. I was talking to a friend of mine, and when he was younger, he used to take steroids and work out. And he says, I knew what they were bad for me. He says, but I tell you what, you just took, you know, a, a couple of micrograms. And um, he says, you take them and within a, you take them every couple of days. And after two weeks, he says, I'm lifting weights. I never thought I could even move in my life. He says, so you're taking tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of these hormones and really having a major disruption in your body. And the body doesn't need a lot of things. For example, vitamin B12. I'm going off on a tangent here, but just to make a point, you need about a thimble full of vitamin B12 your body utilizes in a lifetime. So you don't need a lot. So a tiny, tiny bit is going to make a big difference. And that's what's happening with these phthalates when you expose your children to them, or you. I mean, I'm not just talking about kids, you too. Avoid personal care products that list fragrance or the word parfum, P-A-R-F-U-M, as an ingredient. And any air freshener, scented candles, they're probably laced with these phthalates. So it's kind of funny when it comes to candles. One of the things you may think to do is I want to get romantic, baby, and I'm going to light some candles. and I'm going to play some really soft music, maybe some, um, some jazz. And um, you light the candle, and it has that nice scent in the air. And what's happening is those scented candles have phthalates in them that are endocrine disruptors and can actually affect your testosterone production. So what's happening now is you're actually diluting, if that's the right word, your abilities when it comes to romance because you're putting these toxic chemicals in the air. So if you're going to burn candles, and I'm okay with you burning candles. I think they're very nice and very romantic. Get a beeswax candle or a soy candle. And make sure if it's scented, it's scented with something called essential oils. And it's not scented with these toxic chemicals. And so you have a holiday party, especially around Christmas and things. People are burning candles, and you walk in the house, and it smells like the artificial Christmas. I always have to laugh at that. I remember Christmas. I'm old. Not that old. But I remember Christmas is when it smelled like pine trees because you had a pine tree. Now it smells like pine trees. It doesn't even smell like pine trees. It smells like a version of pine trees, a, a, a toxic chemical version of pine trees. And so that's what this generation thinks Christmas smells like. They might not even know what a pine tree smells like. So I'm not a big fan of these things, and I want you to be really, really careful with them because it can actually cause you to gain weight. And if you're overweight, your fat's producing estrogen. Estrogen causes you to lay down fat. Fat produces estrogen. Estrogen counteracts testosterone. Estrogen causes abnormal cell growth. Wow. Isn't this wild, the things you're doing every single day? I told a story a bit ago um, where a young lady came in and was talking about it with her children, and she started crying. I didn't know I was doing this to my kids with these air fresheners. I said, dryer sheets. And you would have thought I slapped her in the head. <gasps> dryer sheets? But I love that soft feeling that it creates. Dryer sheets don't make your clothes soft. What dryer sheets do is they lay down a layer of oil, and then your hand slides over the sheet, and, uh, over the material, and it feels soft to your skin. All it does is essentially lubricates your, your, your materials. So take away the dryer sheets, folks. Got to get rid of them. But what's going to make my clothes feel soft? Oh, I don't know. Washing them? <laughs> Look at me. A wise guy, huh? Vinyl. Hey, there's a word. Not the records. I guess the records, too, if you smelled like records. Chemicals with vinyl chloride plastics, they're called uh, organotins, another word for or, uh, endocrine-disrupting hormones, 
they they stay in the environment for a very long tr- time and they're strongly linked to obesity. Exposure of mice to the organitin tributylitin. It's used on a ship exteriors to prevent buildup of crustaceans. I'm sure you don't have that in your house, but it's used in other things as well. If these if they're exposed to this before birth, permanent changes that can predispose animal to weight problems occur. PVC plastics such as pipes, uh, vinyl flooring, other vinyl products contain dibutylatin and other organotins. These are all just chemical words. Adding insult to injury, vinyl is also laced with phthalates and the obesogen it gets into your body. So that smell of vinyl, whether it's a new purse, whether it's a, a raincoat, or whether it's a shower curtain, you don't want that smell. If you're smelling that smell, you're getting toxic chemicals in your body. Not a good idea. Nonstick products. This is a biggie. I want to go back to vinyls for a second. So if, if you're going to have a flooring, don't put vinyl in. Shades, purses, shower curtains, try to get them out. Not a good thing. Uh, hardwood floors. I'm a big fan of hardwoods. My whole house is in hardwoods. Uh, what I do with my hardwoods is when I got them, well, some of the rooms had them when I got the house, and then I tore all the carpet out. Carpet is a breeding ground for horrible cooties and yucky things. And if you have carpet in the house, I don't recommend you do. Uh, but if you still do, you want to get it cleaned with natural cleaners, not those synthetic ones. Uh, but if you have the opportunity to tear your carpet out, I would recommend tile or hardwoods. Now, if I like hardwoods, get them pre-finished. Because if you've ever done new construction where they lay down the hardwoods and then they sand it and then they put the polyurethane or whatever it is on top of there, that can what's called outgas or put chemicals in the air for months after, they're, after it's uh, uh, exposed to this. So you want to make sure that if you're putting the chemicals on, on the floor, you, um, you, you try to use the, 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 pre, the prefab ones or the ones that are pre-finished already. Nonstick products. A review article published in literature on the subject. Um, you get chemicals called PFOAs, perfluorooctanox, and they can lead to obesity. Obesity. PFOA, it's sometimes called Teflon, is used in nonstick cookware, uh, kitchen hardware lines, uh, anything with stain-proof coatings on furniture, uh, grease-proof wrappers, microwavable popcorn machines, uh, popcorn wrappers, and waterproof materials. So there's a chemical that's found on the lining of, po- of microwave popcorn wrappers, and it's released. Uh, and when it's released, you're eating this stuff, and it can actually lead to a condition called popcorn lung. Because when you take an x-ray of people, it looks like they have popcorn in their lungs, and it causes tumors to grow. And in fact, the popcorn industry had to take dramatic uh, steps to reduce the exposure to this because their workers were developing popcorn lung from these chemicals. Even rappers, if you remember, think back now, way back, 30 years ago, pizza would stick to the box sometimes. Pizza doesn't stick to the box anymore. Why is that? We're lining pizza boxes with this nonstick ingredient that, and that can get into your food. Pretty bad stuff. And so you just keep exposing yourself to these things time and time and time again. And the problem is that they're cumulative. If you already own nonstick stick cookware, don't freak out. But get rid of it. Replace it with American-made cast iron or untreated stainless steel cookware or glass or ceramic. Iron frying pans are great. I have one. I have two small ones and a big one. And I love them. What you want to do is make sure you know how to clean them, though. Okay, so go online. You don't, if you use soap and water on your, on your iron pan, it's not a good idea because the iron is porous. So if you have to scrub something out of it, what you can do is take uh, kosher salt, crystal salt, like the big chunks of it, put it in the pan, and like if it's rusted or if it has stains on it, and just get a rag and rub that in. And what that does, it acts like a sandpaper, basically, and breaks it up. And then you could rinse it out if you need to, dry it, put it on your stove and dry it because if it's wet, it'll rust. And then you could season it, rub a little olive oil or coconut oil into it, and then heat it up. Heat it for about 10 or 15 minutes, either on the stove or in the oven, and it'll season it, it's called, and then it becomes your own natural nonstick pan. That's okay. Now, if you are using a lot of iron, and I'm just going to throw this in as a caveat, uh, you want to get your iron tested periodically because too much iron can be very dangerous. Too much iron can cause oxidation in your blood cell, in your blood, blood lines. 
in your arteries and your veins. And if things oxidize, it can cause hardening of the arteries. And this is one theory as to why men for years had more heart attacks than women. Now women are exposing themselves to phthalates and chemicals and plastics and vinyls. And so they're catching up to us. Yay. Equality. Not a good thing for equality here. But men don't have a menstrual cycle. And so sometimes men can get high iron levels. And years ago, supplements used to have iron in it for men. Now they don't. Most men don't need more iron. Most men have plenty of iron. And so what I do is I donate blood. And I donate blood often because I figure I got some pretty darn healthy blood. And whoever scores, my, my uh, liter of blood there, a pint of blood is going to score, not a liter, a pint. Um, they're going to score big because they're getting some real healthy blood. But they'll, they'll test you. What I'm saying is they'll test your iron there. But I'm a vegan. I haven't had any animal products in over 30 years. My iron is fine. And people say, well, gosh, uh, what do you do? You know, what about the iron? Iron's fine. Don't worry. Um, and I have plenty of energy. Women have a menstrual cycle, but after they stop having their menstrual cycle, they want to make sure their iron doesn't go too high either. So that's why, unless a woman is anemic, I don't recommend she take an iron supplement. And then if she's had a menstrual cycle and then she stopped, you want to get it tested again because too much iron can be real dangerous. But that's where I was going with the iron frying pans. It's okay to use it. Just make sure periodically you do check. PCBs. This is another one. Polybrominated biphenols. Love these big words are used widely as flame retardants in the electrical industry, but they're no longer made because the compounds had such a big environmental and health impact. But these chemicals are obesity-inducing, and what they do is they're similar to BPA and some pesticides. They work through the estrogen receptor pathways. So where estrogen gets absorbed and then tells, it's kind of like a switch. Estrogen gets absorbed and says, okay, cell, you do this, and you do this, and you do this. These chemicals are triggering these same switches but at an abnormal level, and it's way too much. The same company that made the bulk of PCBs is now behind the push for chemical farming system and genetically engineered foods. That's another topic, genetically engineered foods. The argument is that it's exactly the same as non-genetically engineered foods, so we don't have to label it. Well, if it's exactly the same, why not label it? Well, people will see that it's a genetically modified food and they won't buy it because they're going to have concerns. But it's exactly the same. Well, it's exactly the same, then label it. And thus goes the, uh, the, the match. I was going to say something else, but the match going back and forth. of uh, Yes, label it, don't label it. I think you should label it. I want to know what I'm buying. I want to know if it's a genetically modified food that I have the option to buy it or not. 92% of corn and 94% of soybeans in this country are genetically modified. And when you alter the DNA of the food, you've created a new protein. It is not exactly the same. And so now this new protein is being absorbed into people's bodies and your immune system going back generations and millennium, your body, you as a human, have never seen this protein before because we just made it. It's brand new. And so your body doesn't know how to react to this protein, and many people are having reactions to genetically modified foods and don't even know it. A lot of people have come to my office and say, Doc, I've been tested for everything known to man, and I can't, they can't find anything wrong. So what do I do? First thing I do, I'm a chiropractor, I check their nervous system because the nervous system controls everything. So I want to make sure there's no pinched nerves. So mechanically, my team of doctors and I, we line up all the bones the best we can to take the pressure off the nerves. Then I look at their diets. Maybe they're eating a lot of alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweet, or what I call the seven deadly sins of nutrition. And we need to say, stop that. Stop putting those bad foods in your body. And then I do an evaluation. I'll say, maybe you're deficient in some nutrients, and I'll get you on some supplements. The minimum that you should be taking right now is Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Absolute minimum. Because your body requires certain fuel to make it run. And when I designed Super Greens and Essential Source, I tried to get as much as I could in a reasonable amount to get your body functioning the best you possibly can. I take it every day. My staff takes it every day. Most of my patients take it every day. Hopefully, you're going to take it every day, too. And you can get it on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. They're powders, and I take a scoop of each. I mix I like coconut milk. I mix it with coconut milk, drink it down. If I have a big event, if I have to go give a lecture, if I'm going to work out, if I have a hot date— I'm going to take a double dose because I want to make sure my body's working the best it possibly can at all times. 
And so that's available on my website, drjoesposito.com. And so these chemicals that you're being exposed to all come from artificial things that were introduced into our lives that really weren't here 30 years ago. A lot of it is processed foods. People are exposed to PCBs by eating contaminated fish, meat, dairy products. Eating lower on the food chain, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, is always going to be your best bet. And in this case, it's going to help reduce your exposure. Now, it doesn't mean you have to go vegan, but the more plant-based you do, the better you are. I'm a vegan. And if you knew what I knew, you would do what I do. If you knew what I knew, I promise you, you would make sure your nervous system is working properly, that you don't have pinched nerves, because pinched nerves can cause pain and they can affect organs and cause the joints to wear out. You would make sure your digestive system is working the best it possibly can, and you would put in your body the best nutrients possible. So, folks, if you have a health care qu- problem, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, car accidents, sports injuries, knee hurts, foot pain, I want you to come see us. If you'd like to make an appointment to come see us, go to my website, drjoesposito.com. My team of chiropractors and I would love to take a look at you to see if it's something that we can help. And if it is, we'll accept you as a patient if we think it is. If we don't think we can, we won't accept you as a patient. And we'll put together a protocol for you, which will include the nervous system, chiropractic care, the digestive system, if you have acid reflux, heartburn, we may have to massage or pull your stomach away from the diaphragm. And we want to put together a dietary plan for you and supplements if necessary. So if you want to get well, if you're serious about wanting to get well, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, and we can set you up a time online or you can call us. We accept most major medicals, uh, Medicare, car accident insurance, workers' comp insurance. Yeah, I said Medicare, right? Yeah, I know. I I laugh at that because so many doctors don't even want to mess with Medicare anymore. But you know what? All the insurance companies stink. And hopefully that's going to change real soon so that doctors are now motivated to get back to work. Because doctors now are looking for ways out. I promise you, every doctor I know is looking for a way out of practice. If they're not looking for it, they're thinking about it. Because it's not like it used to be. It's not as rewarding as it used to be. It's mostly paperwork. I probably spend about 40, 50% of my overhead filling out papers for patients. My whole staff. I got a big staff. So if you want to make an appointment, drjoesposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe. We'll get you set up. We accept your insurance probably. And we'll go ahead and get you under care as soon as possible. Because most people are just sick and tired of being sick and tired. They want to get well. So we're talking today about things that can make you gain weight aside from just eating too much food. And this was interesting. Vegetarians have considerably lower obesity rates compared to people who eat meat. And the question was, why? Is it because they're not eating meat or because they're eating more plants? Well, either one. Maybe they're just eating fewer calories and exercising more. But there was a study done recently out of the Netherlands, and it was controlled for all of that. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's about chicken. Researchers effectively studied men and women who ate the same number of calories a day ate the same amount of fruits and vegetables and grains, and did the same amount of exercise, but ate different types of meat. Men and women who ate less than a small serving of meat a day, on average, were not overweight. But the more meat they ate, the heavier they got. By one and a half servings a day, which is not a lot, they crossed the threshold of what's called BMI, body mass index, of 25, and became officially classified as overweight. What type of meat was the worst, of course, was the next question. The study of hundreds of thousands of men and women showed that poultry consumption appeared to be the worst. But maybe the reverse was there. Maybe it was because they were uh, meaning obesity leading to greater chicken consumption and not greater chicken consumption leading to obesity. Scientists try to figure this stuff out. Chicken consumption was associated with the weight gain in both men and women, and it didn't take much. Compared to those who ate any chicken at all, those eating about 20 or more grams of chicken a day, which is not a lot, had a significantly greater increase in their body mass index. That's about one chicken nugget or a single chicken breast once every two weeks compared to no chicken at all. Now, they did the study. Everything was taken out except chicken versus other meats. The people that ate chicken gained more weight. Why is that? That they don't know. But I'll tell you this. I'll give you my opinion because God knows I have an opinion on everything. Could be the antibiotics. Chickens can't be fed steroids to make them grow, but they can be fed excessive amounts of antibiotics, which act like steroids to make them grow. And it's a known fact that industrial farms give livestock antibiotics to help them get fat faster. 
and for other things too, fight infection. But when people ingest too many antibiotics, it can make them gain weight. In one study, microbiologist Martin Blazer of New York University found that mice fed short courses of antibiotics similar to those that children receive. So like if you have an infection, they compared the non-drugged mice with the antibiotic fed mice and they had lower levels of T cells, which regulate the body's immune system. Obesity has been associated with low levels of the T cells. So once again, it's not just you eat food and it's stored as fat. We've got this big chemical mix going on. And we're even affecting the T cells when we're overweight. Or are we overweight because we affected the T cells? In a separate observational study published in uh, 2011, the Internal Journal of, Journal of Obesity, researchers from Denmark followed a development of 28,000 babies for seven years, monitored the children's weight and development. Babies who were given antibiotics within six months of birth were more likely to be overweight by age seven than those who didn't receive such early doses of antibiotics, regardless of how trim their parents were. So now we're starting to see a correlation here. Now, antibiotics save lives. I'm not against antibiotics, but you want to avoid them as much as you can. Talk to your doctor. Check things out. Do you really need the antibiotics? American Pediatric Association just came out recently and said, don't give antibiotics for kids with ear infections because studies had shown whether you gave them antibiotics or not, the healing time was the same. What I know about ear infections is that many times it's the top bone in the neck out of place rubbing up against the ear canal. And as a chiropractor, I've treated a ton of ear infections in children. And in most cases, the results are very fast and very, uh, parents are very happy with the results. So here the problem ha- could be a physical issue, a pinched nerve, leading to a chemical issue, an infection. Because the nervous system controls everything. So whenever a patient comes in our office, if they're a candidate for chiropractic care, my team of doctors and I want to line up their bones the best we can. Then we want to do nutritional evaluations. And then we want to make sure the digestive system is working. But the absolute minimum, people should be doing Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. That's the absolute minimum. This way you're giving your body at least the nutrients that it needs to function at a a, a more effective level than probably what you're doing right now. Then we eat more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Make sure you're getting the chiropractic care. Make sure the spine is checked because you get your eyes checked, you get your hearing checked, you get your blood pressure checked. Why wouldn't you check the thing that controls all of that? The nervous system. And that's why I love what I do. And after 32 years of doing this, six and seven days a week, I'm still more excited now than I was 32 years ago because it's so cool when people come in, follow our advice, and actually get well. And they all say the same thing. What is it? Why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I struggle so many years? And then they'll do the super greens and they'll do the essential source. And people from all over the country, all over the world, actually order super greens and essential source and the same feedback everywhere. Wow, this stuff's amazing. This stuff is great. Thank you so much. That's relatively inexpensive too, which is kind of cool. And so some people can't come see us because they're not, my office is in the Atlanta area. Um, If they're not in the Atlanta area, they can't come see us. But a lot of people travel. We have people from all over the world come to see us. So, folks, if you're just tuning in, unfortunately, you missed an amazing show. But the good news is I'm going to archive this and hundreds of hours of other shows on my website, drjoesposito.com. I want you to go to YouTube or to my my website and go on to YouTube where my videos are. And I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel because we put out new videos. Whenever I do a live lecture, I record it. And hopefully soon we'll be recording the radio shows, too, on video because some people like watching it. And then you can watch the videos because some people are visual learners, some people auditory. It depends on how you learn. And I want to give you the information in the form best suited for your learning style. Because I don't want you to miss something because you're a visual person and we only have audios. So it's all there as well. If you want to order Super Greens, an essential source, uh, you want to order Dr. Joe's cold and flu tonic to help if you have a cold and flu, Dr. Joe's immune booster to help stimulate your immune system, uh, Dr. Joe's intestinal cleanser. If your bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, we have that on the website as well. If you have questions, send it to me through the website. I'm more than happy to answer them for you. But the most important thing, if you'd like to make an appointment, if you'd like to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. You can do it online, or you can call us. We accept most major medicals, car accidents, sports injuries. We want to be your doctors. We really do. We want to help you naturally get well and stay well, not just for you. Your children, your spouse, your family, your friends, your coworkers. I'd say probably 30% of our patients that come into our office are referred by people who haven't come in as patients yet. 
yet is the keyword. So if you want to make an appointment, watch videos, listen to uh, audio, read articles, order supplements, all on the website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe because of you with the number one Dr. Joe in the world. Hey, folks, thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show. We'll talk to you next time.